blessed be the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome each and every last one of you to the Kingdom International Intercession and Word of Empowerment broadcast, where we are in our 42-day International Spiritual Growth Campaign. And our theme is Manifest. 2020 vision as we are standing on the word of truth in the book of jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 amen hallelujah thank you jesus glory to god and the word of the lord reads the lord said to me you have seen correctly for i am watching to see that my word is fulfilled amen in the name of jesus glory to god we bless god in this place that he desire for us to manifest 2020 vision so that amen glory to god we may see ourselves where he has called us where he has chosen us hallelujah glory to god thank you jesus for as we see it and believe it my god it shall begin to manifest in our lives in the majestic name of jesus as it ignite our faith to begin to move and operate and do the things in which he has called forth in us in the name of jesus as you believe it the fruit of god's word my god shall be born in your life and we just bless the name of jesus amen Glory be unto God in this place. Let me introduce our dynamic speaker for tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we thank God in this place um, for this dynamic man of God. He was born to the late Lisa Harvest and Donald Hall in Atlanta, Georgia. His mother would tell him about a prophecy she received while she was pregnant with him. That prophecy spoke about God calling him to preach his word. He preached his first message while in elementary school. On December the 19th, 2008, he gave his life to the Lord and has been running for Jesus since then. He served as an usher, children's choir director, devotional leader, Bible study teacher, minister, armor bearer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. However, no matter what his position is in the church, he always wants to be known as a brother. The eldest of three and the uncle of two wonderful nephews hallelujah thank you jesus glory to god he has a great love for both his natural and kingdom family at this time i want to introduce to some amen and reintroduce to others an amazing dynamic phenomenal man of God, none other than Prophet Dante Harvey with the Lion of Judah International Deliverance Ministries. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dynamic man of God, you have the platform. Amen. God bless you, Apostle. Bless you. And God bless each and every one who's listening on tonight. Um, before we start, I just want to say a prayer. Um, just a quick prayer. Father God, we bless you for the convening of the coming in and the state on tonight, Father. Now, Father, I decrease and I move out of the way, Father, so that she may increase, Father God, speak through me, to me, for me. Father God, that your people may be edified, that the devil may be terrified, but you will be glorified. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, once again, I, I give honor to the Lord, who is the head of my life, and I also give honor to the great woman of God, Apostle Zorn, um, 
for this opportunity. Um, and I give honor to each and every one of you out there who is listening to this broadcast or tonight. Um, as I was studying and as I was searching the scripture and, and going over the scripture and going over my notes, the Lord began to deal with me earlier this week about what to tell his people for such a title as this. And, and the two chapters I was studying in the book of Esther were chapter 3 and chapter 4. And I wanted to talk about um, chapter 4 where Esther's uncle, Mordecai, asked her a question and said, but who knows, have you been called to the kingdom for such a time as this? And as I began to study that, the Lord said, no, that is not what I want my people to have an understanding of. And for those of you who are listening with your Bibles, I want to as a quick digital, um, turn with me to Esther chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Um, and as I said, I want to talk about that. But the Lord said, no, this is what I want you to tell my people on tonight. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to tell my people I refuse to bow character versus culture. And when the Lord spoke that into my spirit, something began to manifest at the beginning of this week. There were many trials and tribulations that began to attack me in school, at work, everywhere. And I found myself in a tug of war match and said, God, what is going on? And God said, this is the illustration of what it is that I want you to tell my people. And so we're starting in verse 1 of chapter 3 of the book of Esther. It said, after these things, the king of our promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agite, and advanced to the seven six feet above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. I want to stop right there before I continue and give you a little backstory of Haman and Mordecai. Mordecai was a Jew who believed in the true and living God, and everything he did, his life revolved around Jehovah God. From the time he woke up to the time he lay down, he knew that God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Whereas Haman, on the other hand, Haman was a pagan who was self-centered, who was evil, corrupt, who was led by the demons of the flesh, who was all out to satisfy himself. And so we see in the first two verses of this chapter, of this chapter, that the king had elevated Haman to a position, to a high position over all the princes and governors in the king's administration. And, and the king also made a declaration that everyone should reverence Haman because Haman was the king's ace boom cool. He was the king's best friend. And, and here it is that, um, here it is that as the king had made this declaration that whoever saw Haman should bow and reverence him, Mordecai stood on his principles that he was not going to bow to nothing or no one because he knew the word of God and the word of God said, Thou shalt not have no other image, or thou shalt not have no other God before thee, neither in the heavens, underneath the heavens, or underneath the earth. Mordecai understood the principle and the word of God so much that it was not something that he quoted, but it was something that he demonstrated. And that's where our title comes in, that I refuse to bow character versus culture. And if you allow me to stay right here for a few seconds, I can talk about this for just a few seconds, is that in today's world, no matter what part of the world you live in, whether you're living in Ethiopia or the United States of America or Great Britain or the Caribbean, you find that there are themes in the culture, in the world, that are challenging directly the position of the church. And so what happens is we see a lot of people who call themselves sons and daughters of the Most High God, who say, for God I live and for God I die. Those who declare the name of Jesus, we see them compromising Bible principles and biblical truths just to satisfy the culture of this world. And it's sad today, especially in my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia, where there is a church that has a homosexual pastor and the members are homosexual. And what justified the reasoning 
above this is that they say God is love and that you can't judge them. But the Bible declares, be ye holy, for I am holy. The Bible declares, for this shall body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, for this is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we understand that when we read the Bible, that Jesus wasn't a whoremonger, that Jesus was not a homosexual, that Jesus was not a liar, that Jesus was not a Democrat, that Jesus was not a Republican, but still we see the church compromising biblical truth to satisfy the world. And so that time was during Haman and Mordecai's time, that, that when Mordecai refused to bow to submit himself unto the authority of Haman and reverence or worship Haman, he was making a stand for biblical truth. And so we have here today that there are people, people who go in and out seven days a week who took the Bible and, and sing songs of Zion, but yet they don't stand on biblical truth because they allow any and everything to come in. Uh, we have what I like to call these polyhedric saints, uh, these biracial saints uh, that try to be wicked and Christian, uh, that try to be Muslim and Christian, uh, but the Bible declares what fellowship does light have with darkness? What fellowship does Jesus have with Bilal? What fellowship does the sanctified have with the unsanctified? What fellowship does clean have with uncleanliness? If I can't draw you to the kingdom, then there's no need for me to associate with you because if I can't draw you, then you're going to draw me. And so what's happening is we have people in this world that call themselves Christians that are bowing to the authority of Haman. They have submitted themselves unto the authority of the world, and they have lost out and sold themselves out, sold out their birthright, and said, look, now I love Jesus, but I also love this, and that can't be so, for the Lord Christ himself has said, you can't serve two masters. And so we have that issue of men trying to serve two masters. But Mordecai knew better. And so every time Haman walked around, every time Haman came in, every time Haman was in that area, Mordecai refused to bow. Mordecai refused to submit himself unto a man that was not his God. He refused to submit his identity unto a culture that could not get him into heaven but would send him directly to hell. And what happened as we continue to read this, it said in verse 4, Now it came to pass, and they spoke daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, meaning that the world was trying to evangelize unto Mordecai. I said, Mordecai, man, you got to submit to Haman. It was written in the law, and Haman turned to death. I mean, Mordecai, excuse me, turned to death here to them. And the people got mad, and they went to Haman and said, Haman, there's a Jew by the name of Mordecai that refuses to bow unto you. And if we put a little back story on Haman and Mordecai, and we read the beginning of the book of Esther, we see that that there was already some tension, some friction between Haman and Mordecai, because Mordecai had favor in the sight of the king, because he had saved the king's life one day of a plot. And it wasn't Haman who got the recognition, but it was Mordecai who got the recognition. And so Mordecai had always been envious, and he despised Haman ever since that day. And so what has happened is the people run to Haman and tell, Mordecai, and tell Haman that Mordecai refuses to submit. And so what's happening is that the people of the world are running to politicians and they're saying that churches are preaching hate messages and, and churches are collecting money and, and they're lying and, and perverting and, and they're doing all these things. The people of the world are doing everything they can to wage war against the kingdom of God. And it's evident in the Bible because the Bible declares in the book of Matthew, if I'm not mistaken, that the kingdom suffered violence. And so here it is. We have had have, have the people running to Haman after they tried to get Mordecai to jump ship 
Jesus and say, look, your God is all that. If you submit to Haman, and if you do this for Haman, and what we have here in this situation is that we have a group of people, even on today, no matter where you are, that's trying to get you to forsake the true and living God. And so Haman, when he heard the news, his heart became hardened, and he became upset, and he became angry with the news because he felt like, hold up, I am the king's chief advisor, and that no matter what it is, you should reverence me. I don't care nothing about your God. You should reverence me. And so what happens is, and if you all know the story of, of Daniel and also of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, then you know that this story parallels their stories as well. And so what happens is, Haman goes unto the king and conspires to not only kill Mordecai, but he conspires to kill all of the Jews. And if you're paying attention to what's going on in the world, there's a plot to try to wipe out the church of God. And I'm not talking about people that just going to church and having the God leaving out and walking back into sin, but I'm talking about the remnant of people who have submitted themselves unto the Lord and have truly and totally sold out. What I'm talking about is that there is an attack on Christianity that is an attack. And what's happening is if we don't submit to the world, what will happen is we will be killed off. I know that sounds a little radical. I know that sounds a little extreme. But we see this on the daily. Here in the United States, churches, churches are under attack when there are men and women that will come in and slaughter us an entire church because they stand on the principle of Jesus is Lord when there are senators and congressmen and women that are legislating and passing laws that's trying to prohibit preachers from preaching the gospel because certain groups get offended. That's an attack on the church. And what's happening is that many prominent preachers are bowing to Haman. But what God is saying to you in this season, I promise you I'm not going to be before y'all long because I'm not a long-winded preacher. But what God is saying to you in this season is do not bow. Maintain your character of Christ. Because what's happening is that we're seeing a time such as this where the wheat and the tares are being separated. And what God is doing during this whole time that the church is under attack is that he's strengthening our character. And though you may be discouraged at the news of this, because Mordecai was discouraged when he heard the news of that Haman had legislated a bill to kill out all the Jews, though you may just be discouraged at this, God is fortifying your integrity and your character that no matter what comes your way. For the Bible declares, the Bible declares no weapon formed against you. No matter what comes your way, you'll be able to stand and know that God can and God will deliver. And even if he don't deliver, you will understand that he is still God. Because you will understand that even if I die in this life, I will live in the next. And so throughout all the time and all the testing and all, all the laws being legislated, Mordecai still kept his character and his integrity as a man of God. Even though I can imagine Haman said that will get him to bow, even though we can imagine that, that there are government out there who are conspiring, that are conspiring to shut down churches, God is asking, are you going to maintain your character as a son and daughter of the true and living God, or are you going to Failing like a dollar bill. Are you going to be who you declare? Are you going to demonstrate that you have a Christ mindset? Or are you going to back out like a terror and go wherever the wind blows you? Like I said earlier, we see that Haman represents cultural and societal norms that go against Bible precepts. These cultural and societal norms have crept their way into the church. But 
But here it is, we have a remnant of Mordecai out there who still hold on to the precepts of the Bible that's not afraid to declare and cry out and spare not that holiness is still a reality, that holiness is right, that, that ye must be born again, that you got to crucify the flesh. If I can encourage you on tonight, my encouragement will be to stand for righteousness, stand for holiness, Stand for Christ Jesus. Take up your cross and bear it. And don't submit to any other authority unless that authority be up to God. In spite of what they say and what law they legislate, maintain your integrity through it all. I know you may get tired sometimes, but the Bible, the Bible, the Bible declares, be not weary in well-doing. Your well-doing is that you maintain an integrity that is worthy for the king. And I'm reminded that the Bible says, I know that you have little strength, but if you've been holding on, and God is encouraging you, and he's strengthening you on tonight. And I heard, I heard the Bible says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up between the fields. They shall run and not be weary. Because you maintain an integrity and a character that did not hold. Even when they told you that love is love, God is love, they wanted you to accept the perverted uh, uh, ideology, and they wanted you to accept their definition of love. And I don't care who gets mad at this tonight, but, but marriage was ordained between man and woman. And when they told you that God doesn't care, if you look at your zodiac sign, and I don't care who gets mad at this on tonight, but if you're temper and dibble and dabble with zodiac, you are a full grown witch. And you can't be a witch and a Christian. I, I don't care who gets mad at this, but I don't care if you tell one lie or two. Liars shall not carry in the sight of God. And I don't care who gets mad at this. Either you're going to be chased and saved and save yourself from marriage because you can't be a homemaker and live for Jesus. What I'm saying is that we have to learn how to maintain our character against the culture and keep our character against the culture because if we lose our character then we can follow the culture, then we might as well be prepared to burn in hell. So if I can encourage you all tonight, I told y'all I wasn't long-winded, and if I can encourage you all tonight, I want to encourage you all to be like Mordecai. Mordecai was a Jew. He was a man of God. He knew what his character said without him saying much words. Jesus said that they shall know you by the love. They shall know that you're my disciples by your love. He never once said that they will know that you're my disciples by the way you speak in tongues and sing, but he said by the way that you love, by how your character is. Mordecai never once had to define his character against the society that he lived in. Instead, he simply lived his life according to the word of God. He simply did what was instructed of him according to the word of God. He simply behaved. Mordecai never once had to stand on the side of a corner and said, I'm a man of God. But he lived his life as a man of God. He lived his life following God. That was his character. And so what I encourage you all tonight, keep your character. Keep your character. Against any society norm, any society ideology, any other religious doctrine that, that counteracts with the word of God, keep your character. Because you don't have to say much. Just live the life that God has called you to live. Be the salt of the world. Don't say that you're the salt. Keep your character. Because at the end of the story, at the end of the book of Esther, we see that Mordecai lives and Haman is defeated. Because Mordecai kept his character and he, he had integrity. And Haman, 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 the world, the world, the world, the world was destroyed in its own devices. 
can't say anything else to encourage you all tonight. I want to say refuse to bow. Your character as a child of God will prevail over the culture of the world. And I thank you all, and I bless you all, and I now turn the platform back over to Apostle Zorn. Amen, amen, hallelujah. We bless the Lord on tonight, people of God. Amen, brought a powerful message. Amen, coming from Prophet Dante, hallelujah, Harvey, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Man of God, we just thank God for you on tonight. Thank God for the powerful message, amen, that you have just released in the hearing of God's people. Amen, people of God, it's time, how amen, to refuse to bow, amen, and I just thank God for you on tonight, man of God, for just coming forth and being obedient, amen, and releasing, hallelujah, to God's people, amen, instruction in this season, amen, hallelujah, that it's time for us as Christian men and women of God, amen, to stand flat-footed here in the earth, amen, hallelujah, and begin to walk our mandate that we have and our position that we have in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. So we just thank God for you on tonight, man of God and people of God. We just bless the Lord for those of you who are listening eh, from around the airways, amen, those who are through the Facebook Live, the podcast, the speaker, uh, any one of the media outlets, amen, if you would like to just call in, amen, the number is 319-527-2332, amen, the man of God is here, the prophet of the Lord, amen, is on standby on tonight, if you just want prayer, amen, or you just want the man of God to speak in your life, amen, he is available on tonight, hallelujah, for you to just call in, amen, and be with us, again, the number is 319-527-2332, amen, and we were coming from the book of Esther, amen, chapter 3, and chapter 4, amen, hallelujah, people of God, we know, amen, hallelujah, that there are a lot of Haman out there, amen, but it's time for the spirit of Mordecai, amen, to get a hold of some of us, amen, because many of us are bowing down to people, 